Hey guys, welcome back to NEMT Van Talks. I'm Jasmine. And I'm Monica. And guess what? Today, we are talking about barriers that may stand in your way of becoming a NEMT business owner. That's exactly what we're talking mm-hmm. about. And we understand as NEMT business owners ourselves that, hey, you may be faced with, you know, some certain situation where you may have to triumph over, right? Yeah. So the first one is, and I hear this all the time, um, it's always in our DMs or it's always posted <laughs> as a comment under our content, what right? What is it? What? Poor driving record. Oh, God. So you know that we're always on the road. Yeah. Like this, this is transportation. This is so, transportation. you know, it is preferred that you have a good driving record, mm-hmm. but don't look at that as um, a barrier to stopping you right. from getting started. Right. So essentially, you can still get started mm-hmm. um, with your NEMT business, even with a bad driving record. But then maybe I should back up, right? Because what's on your driving record? Right. Right. So, you know, are there fatalities? Like, you know, that's definitely next level, right? But if you have a few tickets or maybe you have some speeding tickets, parking tickets, whatever the case may be, right? You can still start your NEMT business. Mm -hmm. Now, I will tell you that insurance is our highest cost within our operations. So be prepared to um, possibly see an increase in your insurance premiums, right? But that doesn't mean that, you know, you can't start Mm -hmm. because you can. Yeah, that's true. And then since you mentioned your driving record and your driving history, you also want to think about your um, criminal background, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, What does your background look like? right and so that can play a role in you being able to start and operate your business so one of the things is like do you have any criminal offenses that may consist of um, elderly abuse child abuse Um, so those are some things you want to keep in mind when um, you're starting your business as well now again like Jasmine just mentioned that doesn't mean that you cannot start the business that just means that you probably won't be the face of your business so you will be owner you won't be owner operator um you'll just be you'll oversee the day-to-day aspects um you you oversee the day-to-day role of your business and you have to hire individuals that um, can meet the driving qualifications and that can meet the background qualifications in order to operate your business so you can just oversee those roles yeah but then it also um depends on who you're working with right Mm -hmm. because if you're a business owner and you're only doing private pay clientele who's really checking your background that's true unless it's a regulation or something through your state which is contingent to getting the actual business license Mm -hmm. Um, but then it goes back to to what you mentioned about it will affect your insurance premium because if you have all of well, these... Well, no, I'm thinking about the criminal background check aspect of it. Yeah, I know, but when when we're saying getting started... Oh, it, it well, won't... there's no way around that because you got to right. have insurance yes, to operate the business. And so it will affect your premium costs if you have like a you know, DUI on your record and all that stuff. Of course, it's going to affect you. But you're right. Who's regulating like... When it comes to criminal background mm-hmm. checks. So if you want to think about that. Pay. Now, if you're going to do, you know, work with Medi-Cal or maybe you have a contract with um, a facility, then, mm-hmm. yeah, they may want to know that, hey, you know, you're conducting thorough background checks within your business. And I mean, honestly, I've never had a client call and say, do you guys conduct background checks within your business? I need to know because I need to know if I'm going to schedule a ride with you. We've never... The only time that we've been access to furnish our background checks are when we're dealing like on contract levels yeah. type stuff. Mm-hmm. But for private pay clients, we've never been asked that at all. And that's a great point you did. <clears throat> you mentioned that because one of my mentees that I was mentoring up north in California, um, he was starting, well, he is starting a business, and that was one of his main concerns. Like, he wanted to start the business, but he's concerned because he has something in his background and his driving records, mm-hmm. which is a DUI. Um, 
And so he was, it happened years ago. Mm -hmm. And so and that was one of the That's another thing, too. Yeah. It depends on when it happened. Yeah. Was it 15 years ago, yep. 20 years ago? You know, they may only go back, you know, 10, 10 years. years. Mm -hmm. So you want to look at that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, ultimately, you know, it's not, it's, well, I mean, it could become a barrier depending on, it's circumstantial. Yeah, Let's just say that. Mm -hmm. It's circumstantial. Um, but, you know, ultimately, um, depending on what the criminal offense is or what the what's on your driving record, you still may be able to start your NEMT yeah. business. Um, but then ultimately, you want to be able to create multiple streams of income. So you want to be able to, you know, take on those service contracts, work with those brokers mm -hmm. and do private pay clients. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you may want to explore, you know, if your criminal history is just you know you just like you know what this ain't gonna work then you may want to maybe put the business in your wife's name yeah. or a family member that you know love and trust right but of course you want to definitely make sure that you have some type of um contract, contract in, place. in place um so yeah but you know what's funny what Girl, I get people that don't even have a driver's license trying to start this business. Really? I've never yes. had that happen. Yes. Really? Yes. Um it was Wait, young, how did they, uh, it was a young kid it, it was a young kid he was 18. oh i was like how do you not have a driver's license though was, and but at least these people yeah i mean there's people there's older adults out here yeah. that don't have driver's license that's true but i'm saying but you can still start, start the business yeah you can be owner operate well owner of the business mm -hmm. but here's the thing what i do like about that though at least he's thinking about being an entrepreneur. He's not letting that. At like, a young age. Yeah, oh, a young he, age. He, he was he's motivated. A, he's motivated. But with that, there's insurance requirements, right? Oh, yeah. So the insurance won't even pick you up yep. until you... Some, some states, some 21, 21. Others, 24. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't even meet that threshold. Criteria, yeah. Right. But... Um, but then I know you did mention to me that you've had people reach out that's trying to start the business and they're in a wheelchair so what about the physical oh, yeah. limitations as well like mm -hmm. um physical requirements because you know you you will be responsible for like you know pushing wheelchairs if in you're and out. Gonna, if you're going to be an owner operator yeah. yeah that's a great point but you know like i continue to encourage him because of course like why i'm i'm all for like you know hurdling over any type yes. of challenge so you know if you're in a wheelchair of course i wouldn't recommend that you start this business because you don't want to run the risk of injuring yourself any more than you already are so but you if you still want to facilitate it right yeah you can own the business mm -hmm. just hire people to do the day-to-day -day yes. operations yes right yeah. and then also that kind of when when you're faced with certain challenges or whatever type of disability that you have that can be fuel for your business right because mm -hmm. you know how to cater to that population yes. because you're dealing with it yourself every and you can day. teach your you can train your drivers on that as well like mm -hmm. this is what people look for like i'm in this this condition myself so i know exactly how i want to be treated so you you definitely can teach people and train your drivers on that and another scenario you know i have a lot of older adults that are looking to start this business but they say oh i can't you know i can't really lift that much i can't really bend down that much mm -hmm. okay well um Yes. Lifting and bending is going to be part of this, right. this role. Like, you're going to have to do some lifting and bending for sure. Absolutely. So, you know, maybe you just want to do, you know, ambulatory service, right? Oh, yeah. Where they can get in and out of the vehicle themselves, but you may have to just kind of walk them into the building or, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh -huh. But, you know, I would say, you know, wheelchair and gurney services is probably not best for you unless you hire drivers. So, yeah, yeah. ultimately, there's Those, a workaround. To yeah, there's a workaround. I think all of the barriers that we just listed into starting, um, you know, your business. Of course, I mean, the way I look at it, there's always barriers into something, right? Whatever type of business you're trying to start. So there's always going to be barriers, but certainly there, there's a way where you can work around those barriers. Um, you can put certain people in place you can put certain you know policies or operations or procedures mm -hmm. in place to work around those um those barriers and still be able to start your business ultimately yeah and i got one last one what cash flow 
That's a good one. Let's talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if you're if you know, if you're like many new entrepreneurs out there, you may not have the capital to start your NEMT business. So that means that, hey, you may have to allocate a certain amount of time to work on building your business mm-hmm. credit so mm-hmm. that you can get lending, right? So that you can get loans, so that you can actually buy the equipment and pay for the licenses and things that you need to start the business. Right. Um you know, so there's lenders out there. There's a lot of lenders out there. There's Lendistry. Lendistry. Um, what's some of the other lenders? Well, you can also look into SBA because oh, if you're a new yeah, business a owner, one. you can go to SBA.gov. Sometimes they have different um, grants that are available that you can apply for. Um, and that, like Jasmine mentioned, especially if you're looking for lending um, to purchase equipment for your business or to purchase vehicle for your business. Um, most of the time, then they do have different resources that are available to assist with the purchase of those items for your vehicle. Yeah. yeah. Or even when we started out, um, when we first opened right. our business, we had a credit card. Credit card with Chase. Mm-hmm. And the credit card was like no interest for the first 12, first months. 12 months. So that gave, gave us an opportunity to, you know, buy the things that we needed mm-hmm. for our business. Yep. Start generating money quickly. And then, of course, pay that pay that credit card off once we get that money flowing within our company. So, um, you know, there's definitely options out there mm-hmm. when it comes to cash flow. You know, definitely don't look at it as a barrier. Mm-hmm. Look at it as, look at it as an opportunity to overcome the challenge. Yeah. Um, tap into your creativity mm-hmm. to think of ways that, you know, you can get the money to start the business, essentially. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. All right. All right, let's get started.